Hello there! I'm going to walk you through how to find peer-reviewed scholarly articles that are relevant to your research question. We're going to be talking and pulling out keywords from your question so we can actually go into the databases and see how to find peer-reviewed articles. We're going to talk about what you want to look for in deciding which articles to use, and I'm going to show you how you can keep track of your articles to come back to. We're going to start at the library's homepage, library.elgin.edu. We're going to go to the research guides. The link you want is right here to the right of the picture. These are all ordered by academic subjects. We're going to go down to psychology. And you're going to look for your course number and your professor's name. So we want Psychology 212 with Professor Salgado. Before we get started actually searching, I want to talk about three necessary components to searching. What, where, and how. The what is the keywords that you're using. Depending on your research questions, within the umbrella of social and emotional learning, your keywords are going to be different from another classmate's. Brainstorm keywords even before you start searching. And be aware that as you're finding relevant information, what keywords and phrases that those sources are using. This iterative process is going to guide you then in helping get the best results. The where is very important. If I asked you to look for movie listings in scholarly databases, you'd have a tough time. If I asked you to find history information in nursing databases, you would have a tough time. The ECC library has over 119 article databases, and some are best for newspaper articles, some are devoted to all kinds of academic subjects and topics and have all kinds of magazine articles and scholarly articles within them, and then some databases, like the ones we'll go in today, concentrate on certain disciplines like psychology. With the what and the where in place, we're going to go to the research guide. This research guide cuts the where down for you by giving you pre-selected information in your discipline and for your assignment. This might be books, this might be article databases, and this might be other relevant information for you. We're going to go to the Finding Scholarly Journals tab on the research guide. And you're going to want to search the databases under the Psychology Databases box. Psych Info and Psych Articles are some of the best. ERIC, an education journal database, is also available. You'll notice there are also links to specific <laughs> scholarly journals in this box as well, but the most effective way to begin to search in the discipline is to begin to look at the psychology databases as a whole. This tab illuminates your where to search. The last component that we need to think about when searching is how. And this tells the database the relationship that you want between your key concepts. So you're using the database's language to help get at more relevant results. The database search tips page on the research guide is all about the how component. These tips allow searchers to connect their terms together in database language. Incorporating these techniques into your searching allows you to build more effective searches more quickly. Most of these tips are actually transferable between most, if not all, of the ECC library's databases. Even other public libraries or academic libraries of future schools you attend. So really practice using these search techniques to boost your lifelong learning skills. These are going to help you forever. 
We're going to go back to the Finding Scholarly Journals tab. We're going to go into the Psych Articles database. If you are off campus, when you go to log in, you're going to have to put in your access username and password, as I'm prompted to here. Here, the database has loaded. Now, before we put in a search, we have to think about what it is we're going to be searching. Let's talk about my research question. I want to look at how preschoolers can learn to share resources. My big keywords are preschoolers and sharing. Now down here, I have additional related keywords that depending on how my searches go, if I'm finding information or not that's relevant to what I'm asking, I might want to play with additional keywords or I might want to substitute keywords that I've already identified. But preschoolers and sharing are the main ideas that I want to look at. And I'm looking at the idea of preschoolers doing the sharing. Here I am in the Psych Articles database. I want to find articles about preschoolers sharing. So I'm going to put in my concepts and I need to use the database's language. I'm going to type it like this. And I'm using a few of those search tips that are on the search tips tab of the research guide. So and, connecting our terms with and, tells the database we want both of those concepts. And the star symbol here finishes all the variant forms of the word that begins with the letters you put before it. So for instance, preschool with a star here, an asterisk, will pick up preschool, preschools, and preschoolers, any other words that might result from this. Let's take a look and click on the green search box. Let's take a look at our results. As long as it says academic journal, we are looking at a scholarly professional journal article. And what that means is an expert such as a psychologist is writing this article and giving information to other psychologists, other experts in professional journals that are devoted to that discipline. And it can be things like significant research to the field, a significant theory paper about um, a disorder or a new topic in the field, things like that. Here we see the basic citation information. We see the title. We see the authors. We see the journal, the date. Here is the abstract. And you want to definitely read through this. This is going to help you learn what your article is about and if it's relevant to your research question. And it's also going to tell you if you're looking at a theory paper or if you're going to be looking at an empirical study. That is some kind of experiment where the researchers manipulated variables to see if their hypothesis had support or if it was negated and did not have support. You're also going to be able to see if the article is full text or not. The HTML full text will just be inside of the database window, the entire article. And if you do PDF full text, you can actually see what that article looked like when it came out in the print journal. You can limit down on the left hand side by a lot of ways to get your results list down if you get a lot of results in the search. One thing you might want to do is select full text. 
and that way you will be able to see all of the articles that come back fully. Another thing you might want to do is limit to those peer-reviewed journals. Not all academic journals are peer-reviewed, a lot of them are, but this will make sure you're looking at peer review. And to put it simply, peer review is a process where before an article by a psychologist gets published, other psychologists that weigh into the decision for it to be published in that journal. So they will say, was this experiment done well? Is this the findings of this experiment? Are they significant to the field? Is this a clinical case that other psychologists should know about metrics? like that before it actually goes into that journal. So it's not just a you submit and you're automatically published kind of thing. They're really scrutinizing these papers that come in. So we've actually all of our results in this search are peer reviewed. I also want to point out to you the subjects that each article is assigned. I want you to think of subject headings like social media hashtags. If you search by them or if you click on them, you're going to be taken in the databases with all of the articles that are tagged with that particular subject heading. It's the same thing where if you go searching by a hashtag like Wednesday Wisdom on Twitter, you're going to get a list of all of the tweets that are using that hashtag. It's a way to use official terminology to group things together that are on the same topic so you can easily discover those pieces of data or that, that information. Let's start looking at some of the results that we have. We're just going to scroll down and I'm glancing at the titles of the articles. I'm very superficially glancing through the abstracts to see what I'm looking at. Here's a case study. And let's take a look here at this seventh result. This is social skill training in an integrated preschool program. And if we look through the abstract here, this is about a proprietary social skills training for preschoolers that happened and was paired with classroom reinforcement of sharing. This looks like an experiment and we're going to go into this record, but I just want to point out that we're still on the first page of results. We have 31 articles that came back for us to look through. I always want you to take a look at all of the results that you're getting, even on multiple pages of results, whether you're in the databases or whether you're in Google, because if you always are only stopping at the first page of results, you're going to be missing some probably dead on articles for you. Let's look at our article record. We can see a lot of the citation information up at the top here of the record. Notice a lot of your citation information is under source. We can see our abstract. And then here are the subject headings. And again, you can use those subject headings to find more articles on similar topics. And very important to read the abstract. That abstract is going to tell you if you're looking at a theory paper, if you're looking at a clinical case study, if you are looking at an experiment. If it was an experiment, you'll be able to see what it was the researchers hypothesized and what they found. On the left-hand side in Psych Articles, you're going to see the full text links if they are available. HTML is the full text just inside of the EBSCO window, and the PDF shows you exactly what the article looked like when it was in the print journal. So here's your title, here's your abstract. This goes into the article itself then, and there's usually an introduction, background, 
method results discussion and conclusions in scholarly journals too you will also always see the references at the end so the sources that they cited in making this paper in running their research study Academic research cites academic research and builds the body of professional knowledge in various disciplines like psychology. Noticed. Scholarly peer-reviewed articles have little pictures unless they are charts or graphs illustrating research findings. Let's go back to the detailed record. On the right hand side, you're going to notice the tools here. Many of these tools are also in other databases. Visually, in the internet window, they just look a little bit differently. They're on a different part of the page. The icons are slightly different. You can do things like print the article, you can email it to yourself, you can save the article by making a folder within EBSCO. Another thing you can do is save by permalink if you want to gather all of the links in a Word document on Google Docs or another uh, program that you use. If you want to save by link, make sure to look for the permalink inside of the database. And it looks like this link here. Do not take this link that's up at the top. The link at the top is temporary and it will expire on you. Also, I want to point out to you, all the databases are going to have the site feature. So you can start to use it and see how the article is cited. But let me tell you, double check this with Purdue Owl, which I will show you in a second, because we do find errors inside of the database generated citations. There are questions you want to ask yourself as you're finding sources. You want to look at are these peer-reviewed experiments and what were the researchers thinking that they would find and what did they actually find? How is the source you're looking at crucial and important to finding information for your research question. You also want to look at how does this source fit in with the other articles that you found as you're putting all of your sources together to fully look at the picture for your research question of what is known. We were just searching inside of psych articles. It's a good idea to look at all of the available databases in the discipline. Different databases have different journals inside of them, so we should always be replicating our search in other databases. And you can, again, use all of those same search tips. They're transferable between databases. Let's go into PsycInfo. I'm going to put in the exact same search that I did before. Here's the results I start with. Again, over on the left are some of the same limiters. So if I want to say I only want full text articles, I can do that. If I only want those peer reviewed journals, all I need to do is click those boxes. And some of the articles available in here might be the same as some of the ones that we found in psych articles. A lot of them, though, are going to be different and not duplicated between the databases. I'd like to point out that we've been searching in basic search so far, which allows you to put all your terms and connectors on a single line. One thing you can do in all of these databases is go into advanced search and that does two things for you. First off, you have multiple lines where you can put a term on each line 
and you can still have your connectors showing the relationship you want between the terms and those multiple lines will also let you search by different type of bibliographic data like the title of an article or if you identify one of those subject headings you can search by that. The other thing it allows you to do is down here start to narrow your search right off the bat. So you might want to say I want to look at full text and only see those full text results right away. You may say I want to limit to peer review right away. Want to look at English language. I would like to limit my results by certain age groups, preschoolers in our case. You can also say I want to look at books, I want to look at articles, or I want to make sure to look at experiments. And that will, searching this way, will take your results down right away into these specific categories. And there's no right or wrong way to do it. If you feel more comfortable searching with basic search and then limiting with the tools, do that. If you would like to start to experiment in advanced search with a subject heading and a keyword and then start narrowing down by your age groups, start and do it that way. Start with whatever feels comfortable to you and if you get lost, if you have trouble, connect with myself. Visit the Citing Sources tab to ethically cite your sources. And there's a lot of resources here that can help you make sure you're properly citing in APA format, both your references list and your in-text citations. We are here to help you succeed. If you don't see an example or you're still confused, please reach out to the librarians. One of the best links for you is the Purdue Owl 7th edition, and you'll be able to see if you scroll down the page over here, in-text citation examples, and then rules for how your reference list should be formatted. There's also a sample paper that you can take a look at. Please don't hesitate to get in touch and ask questions if you need help searching for information here are our hours. Up at the top, we have hours every day except for Sunday, and through the duration of the semester, once spring break is over, we'll maintain those hours. Remotely, you can email libref at elgin.edu for immediate assistance, might be from myself or another one of my colleagues immediately. Also, from the chat window on the library's homepage, you can get right away help during our hours. You are welcome to contact me by email directly or ask me a question in the D2L page. Sometimes if you have a question, other people have it too, and using the shell where everyone can see can be fruitful for everyone. Right now, we may tentatively be back on campus on April 7th, but that is very fluid and that is not a guarantee. So you can go to this website on the Elgin Community College homepage and see the latest information about our hours, about when campus life might resume in person. You can also sign up for the rave alerts. Those are by text message or by email. So just keep checking that. Thank you for watching this. Stay healthy.